So for this unit, we're going to start to talk about the postmodern styles of the 1990s and the early 2000s. And uh, what was happening initially was the onset of a more grungy style. So we call um, this term grunge um, because it was taking place alongside the grunge music scene at the time in Seattle. This image is for Raygun Magazine, and this is by David Carson. So he was very experimental with typographic design. He sort of had this chaos and abstract style in his art, very distinctive. Not always the most legible, but that wasn't what his focus was. And he sets the stage for the style even after he left the magazine, the People after him who worked as the art directors were going to continue in this distinct look. It started in 1992. It featured different musical artists such as Bjork, Beck, and the Flaming Lips. I have a few more of the different magazine covers for Raycon just to kind of see the continuation of the style. The magazine itself was not a graphic design magazine. This was definitely an experiment in typography, layout, and a form of visual storytelling. And this eventually led to the deconstructed, deconstruction style. It is by Peter Seville, of himself writing in the back of a limousine, digitally manipulated image, using a lot of really bright colors, almost giving it this otherworldly, better-than-thou, celebrity quality. He manifests in himself in this image by using himself as both the art director as well as the subject for the photograph. Chantry was another one of the Seattle graphic designers um, associated with posters and art for different album covers, especially for bands in Pacific Northwest, like Hole, The Sonics, and Nirvana. He did a lot of work with X-Acto knives and Xerox machines and photo set type. Uh, his work also had kind of a pop art quality to it, a lot of really bright colors. So this poster is a perfect example of that. This was for an art exhibition called Custom Culture, and because he was really resistant to using the modern digital methods of design, he did a lot of cut and paste, a lot of mixture of photographs and different design elements and different typography technique called Aura Vacui, which means that they cover the, the artist covers the entire page up with material. They don't use a whole lot of negative space. Literally a translation for fear or dislike of leaving empty spaces in an artistic context. Also a lot of young people saw sort of um, some irony in these very serious forward-looking faces in the photography in this image. Next we're going to talk about Fred Woodward who basically developed a visual language used in Rolling Stone magazine. I'm sure we've all seen this magazine. Um, from between 1987 and 2001, his artwork for this magazine was very expressive, very eclectic, very modern, and pretty much gathering information from the American vernacular, uh, such as fat ornamental woodblock display faces, and also some composition deriving from 19th century handbills and sort of a weathered color palette. He got into working for Rolling Stone as an art director from starting off um, at a regional magazine called Memphis, which he got into after he had changed his major um, to graphic design. So this was while he was still in college. Is a full bleed composition of Jillian Anderson. It has a clear retro vibe to it. Kind of a kitschy pulp fiction feel. Um, actually, this is somewhat similar to the pulp fiction movie poster. See this very 
scantily clad woman being attacked by the creature from the Black Lagoon. So definitely this retro feeling, these kind of camping movies, something that's so bad that it's good, kind of these cult classics.